Hello everybody, welcome back. Hope you're enjoying the one day special. So for my second demo, I'm going to use the passion flower once again, but this time I want to show how you can just use part of the image and that you don't have to use them on cards, you can use them in journals, mixed media projects, and I'm going to show this time around how you can use it in a mixed media project. So if I bring in the project, this is the project that we're going to be creating, especially if I don't waffle too much. And the idea is that this is the focal image and that's just part of the flower and that does all the singing for us. That's where your eye is drawn into. So that's what we're going to create today. So we'll start with my substrate. My substrate is a piece of MDF as you can see, and I've covered the pages, I've covered the, the substrate in vintage pages, and I've covered that using Distress Collage Medium. And I'm just drying that, because I actually added the pages just before we went live for the video. So I'm just adding that now, just to make sure that it's totally dry. You can use matte medium, whichever your preferred adhesive is. But I've just used the um, collage medium. Just give that a good dry. And it's saved a little bit of time because we haven't, we haven't adhered those pages during the live video. So you can then just turn that over and just give it a trim around the corners like so. Just trim that. You, what the best way to do it is to get a wonderful edge is to actually sand the edges of your substrate but believe it or not I've got no sandpaper so we're just making do just shove them on the floor everything just goes on the floor which is just great so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring in a scrap of white card and we're going to bring in our stamp and if you wanted to use the stamp and you just wanted to use part of the stamp and you wanted to be precise, what you could do is you could add low tack tape here to your stamp, ink your stamp, remove the low tack tape and you'd have a perfect, just one part of the image. But luckily I, I, I just need to cut mine out so that's not a problem. But you'd be pleased to know in Blue Peter fashion, I've already cut out my image so you don't have to watch me cutting out. So just giving the stamp a good inking, as I always do, even just using part of the stamp. Just why I put that bit of black ink there. So i am actually got my stamp on the All and Create acrylic block. And I'm just going to stamp that. I could have stamped it here. Why I've stamped it in the middle of the card, I think it's just so that I know then you can see the image clearly enough by stamping in the middle of the card. But obviously you would stamp down here so you're not wasting that card. So sometimes we do things differently when we're doing live videos just to make sure that you get, you know, we're not wasting too much time doing things that you don't need to. But look how perfect that image is. Just fantastic. A perfect image. And I'm going to cut this area out. So we'll just chuck that on the floor. And as you can see, if I just put this on white paper so you can see it better, I've actually cut out those images. And I've actually coloured them with Distress Oxide Vintage Photo. I've applied my Vintage Photo Distress Oxide ink to a non-stick craft sheet, spritzed with water and just mopped that colour up with the flowers. Actually, they're actually still wet. But that's that gives me my vintage tones. We'll just move that out of the way. So then what we're going to do is bring our substrate in. And we're going to look at our stencil that we've got on the show as well. I haven't got much room on my desk. I've literally taken up the whole area. I've only got a small desk area. So we're actually using this stencil that's actually on the show. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a print with the stencil. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to apply Vintage Photo Distress Oxide Ink to the stencil. Just applying that around the stencil. And then we can spritz that lightly with water. Because if you don't know, the Distress Oxides are reactive to water. So we can just place that stencil, and I love the stencil mask, whichever you call them, but they it's got no straight edges. So therefore, it's wonderful. I don't have to worry about wiping the edges of the stencil. 
allow that ink to sit to absorb in to the to the card and as you can see it gives a lovely print so I'm going to do that again I could do a second generation print but I still want that darkness of that vintage element so we're just going to add another layer spritz that with water and what I'm thinking is this is where my focal image is going so I want a touch of stencil in here it's just thinking about that focal image where the focal image is going and where you want your stenciling when I'm not live on a video I often spend a lot of time deciding where my focal image will go and I often put this in place and I'll take photographs just so that I can refer back to those photographs and decide what I think is the best composition. So what I'm doing now is I'm using the second generation printing. So I've just spritzed again with water. As you can see, my desk is not the tidiest. So just dab that. And we should get a second generation and that's still a good print. You could get third and fourth generation prints with those stencils. Absolutely, no problem at all. So we'll just give that a dry with our heat tool. I'm trying to do as much as possible where we don't need to dry the, surf, the, the, the surface. But some things just need drying, unfortunately. There's nothing we can do. So I'm just giving that a dry. And I love how the vintage pages are still visible below the stenciling. I really like that. Just give that a good dry. And you can, if necessary, just dab. What I want to do now is just add a touch of gesso to the surface. Sorry, reaching my arm over to my palette knife. One advantage of being at home while you're doing the demonstrations is that you can reach for things. If inspiration takes you somewhere else, you can just reach for something, which is what I'm doing now. So I'm using a piece of uh, my palette knife and I'm using gesso. And I'm going to apply that gesso across my substrate very lightly. You might not see it on camera, but I will lift that up. It adds a nice chalky feel to my substrate. And I just think it's important just to think about these little touches to your substrate. Don't be in a rush to finish your project. For me, it's part of the process, taking your time and enjoying the process. So I'm just adding some of this gesso very lightly, maybe around the edges as well, around the edges of my substrate. And just remember that if you add this gesso to this area here where you've stenciled, it will reactivate that ink. That's what it does because those inks are reactive to moisture. Just to use a little bit too much gesso there. So we we'll just give that a dry now. And it just adds a chalky element to our substrate. And we just need to dry that. So that shouldn't take too long to dry because it's just gesso and it's often quick to dry. Now, if I was doing this at home and not live on a video, obviously it's pre-recorded for you, I would cover the back as well. So cover the back of your substrate with your vintage papers as well. That's what I would do. Just wipe up a bit of this moisture from underneath my substrate. So again, I'm bringing in and just having a think about my focal image. So my focal image is going here. So I know it's going there. Off, I love things off centre. So I know that's going there. So what I want to do is add a touch of stamping. Or could, no, I think what I'm going to do first is add some more circles with this stencil. So we're using this fabulous stencil and I'm going to apply a distress crayon over the stencil, just like so. And some of that gesso is still a little bit wet, but that's okay. I just want to apply another another layer of interest, some more detail. And if I wasn't doing a, a video, I would take lots of time just to add some depth to this crayon area. So I'm just going to add three. 
I seem to be picking the areas where the gesso is every single time. But I would take time to add depth to those circles. And I like how the crayon congeals around the circular areas. So I'm going to add two circles here as well. So add those circles. I'm using a distress crayon. So you can use anything that you can blend with your finger. Maybe chalks or anything like that. So you can add those. Whatever you've got in your stash. Just to add another layer of interest. Yes, you see, I'm liking this here. Where the crayon congeals around the edge of the detail of the stencil. I love that. So I'm going to add two circles here. I'm still thinking about my composition as I'm moving round. Even though we're doing it on a video and it's live, I'm still thinking about that composition. And each project never looks the same. Even when you're repeating one, it always looks totally different when you do it a second time around. Three, four, five, six, seven. So I might add two up here. I like them in odd numbers. It's just something about me. I love odd numbers. It's just more appealing to my eye. You might like even numbers. We're all different. But I like to add odd numbers. So I'm just adding that around there. Like so. Two, four, five, six, seven, nine. Oh, you, you even have lessons in counting here as well. Never mind anything else. Lessons in counting as well. So this is where this is going to go. So I think we need to just tone that down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is colour my embroidery hoop with Vintage Photo Distress Ink. And again, if I wasn't doing a video that is time constrained, then I would spend a lot more time adding layers of ink to this embroidery hoop. Because that's what finishes things off nicely. It's when you take the time to add the details, to add layers of everything, layers of colour, layers of distress crayon. It just makes it look better. So that is our embroidery hoop, which I am loving like that. And I love the fact there's a little bit of stenciling in here as well. So I quite like that. But before we do that, let's add a little bit of stamping. Let's add a bit of stamping to our background. So what we're using now is another one of our stamps from the One Day Special. We're using the Everlasting Texture and it has got lots of texture. You've got text, you've got like the um, chicken wire. Just wonderful. I love background stamps. Background stamps are fab. So what I'm going to do is stamp in brown just to add little details to my background. So we'll just add some of that texture as well. I will lift this up so you can see those little bits of texture that I'm adding to the background, just in case you can't see them on camera. So I will lift that up so you can see that. Add some to the edges as well. This is what little stamps are perfect for. Can you see here, you've got little bits of texture. It adds lovely texture to your design, really makes everything it brings everything to life. So now what I want to do is I'm just looking, what can we have now? I'm just thinking if I've got my other stamp. We've got the other stamp here in our one day special. Just reaching for that, sorry about that. Let me bring in a picture. Can you see the Fritillaria stamp here? has also got some background detail. Just because a stamp is in a border doesn't mean we can't use little bits of this detail here, which is what I'm going to do now. But this time I'm going to add a little bit of that detail in black because I want to make it pop. So I'm just adding a bit of detail to these text areas here. So I'm just going to add the text. Little bit of text. You see, that's all you need. You need those little pops of black. Just moving things out of the way. Just adding a little bit of black. And we can add some of this text as well. That's why this stamp is perfect. It just adds little background elements. And at the moment, I haven't used the whole stamp of anything. I've used parts of the stamp 
from every part of the one day special. So just bring this in so you can see I'm stamping. Oh yes, you see, I love it. I love stamping over the circles. That looks really nice. Yeah, I like that. So we'll bring that in. I will, I will lift that up so you can see that. Just move this out of the way. Can you see here how it's gone over the circle? I just love that. I love how it's gone over the circles here. That's really nice. Do you ever do that? You get really pleased over your project when you're doing it. And this project already looks different than the previous one. Just give that a blot just so that we don't smudge any of our ink. Can you see that you remove quite a bit of ink there? So you do need to dab. You do need to blot your ink or dry it with your heat tool. Obviously, I'm trying to avoid drying so much so that you're not just watching me drying on a video. So I've blotted that there. Bring in our spotlight, as I call it. So that's our spotlight. So what I'm going to do is bring my flower in here and that will go over like that. And that flower is just beautiful. I love that flower and I love it in vintage tones as well. I just love it. I think what we might do is let's add some black cotton. You see, I'm already going off tangent. Whenever I create, I always end up going off tangent. It's just something I do every single time. I go off tangent. So I'm just adding some of that black cotton messing it up a little bit and just adding that black cotton add some adhesive underneath the cotton just to make sure some of them the threads from the cotton just catch and then i'm going to add some adhesive to my little flower i don't want it all stuck down i want some of it sticking up a little bit so let's add that like so bring in my oh yes you see, I like it when, they, when things come together nicely. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick down my embroidery hoop. Stick down that embroidery hoop. I'm just using a PVA glue. So whatever adhesive of your choice. Do you like how I slightly go quiet there just as I aim the actual project down? So you've still got manoeuvrability there, so you can still move it a little bit. I just love that. And while we're holding that down, I'm going to reach for some embellishments from my drawer, which is perfect. I can just reach for them. So we're just holding that down, moving my chair in a bit closer because I'm about five miles away from my desk. And I can't help but waffle because I always do on every video that I do. I do have a bit of waffling. Anybody that knows me knows I'm I'm England's best at waffle. So we're just adding that. Make sure that you hold it in place for a few seconds so that it sticks. And I just love, I just love that. I love it. So what we're going to do then, make sure that's stuck. Yes it is. We're going to add another flower just to give it some more life, to give it some more dimension. And I'm just going to stick that at the top, just slightly off centre, so there's a bit more body to that flower. See, I love that. I love how that's turning out. So what I'm going to do now is I need to add something across here. So I've got, remember them old fashioned Dymo tapes? I've got some tape here that is just like that. So I'm going to cut that into three pieces because I think the black will give it some life. So I'm going to take my longest piece and we're just going to add this across here. Just take that and adhere that. You see, in the focal image is still the most important thing here. It's what you're drawn to. You're drawn to that focal image. So just adding this dymo and that black just makes everything, it just bring, it just gives the substrate some life by adding that black. It does for me anyway. So we just add this like so. One slightly shorter. 
and then I have to add them in threes which I'm sure you're probably aware of now so I'm going to add that there and it's just thinking about the little details how you can bring more detail to your stamps and it's amazing what we've done here is if you think about it all this we've done is we've used part of a stencil part of a stamp in fact part of three stamps that are in the one day special we've literally just used parts of them we haven't done any more and then i've got some of these little numbers that i'm hoping we can just find the numbers in them let me see if we can find some numbers when you want numbers why can you not find numbers there we go we've got a number two four there we go so just looking for some numbers just to add and a half that's perfect so i've got these little vintage pieces here which i love so we're just cutting these in half just to add another element to our design it's thinking about those little details those little details for me are what count and it just brings the whole piece to life so i'm just going to add this here there's a number four the numbers don't mean anything it's just an artistic element an artistic element that I love. I love these artistic elements. And if you can see, everything tones beautifully. It's all in vintage tones. And I love that. And it proves that your stamps don't have to just be used on a card. They can be used in your journal page. They can be used in anything. And this obviously showing an MDF piece. If you've got any of those MDF pieces that you're not using, then get them out. So what I'm doing here is using some alcohol ink just to tint, let's move that out of the way, just to tint one of my metal embellishments. Try not to tint my hands at the same time, but that's usually impossible for me. I normally have to get a bit of paint or alcohol ink or something all over the place. So we're just dabbing that. So that just tones it down a bit so what we need to do just another finishing touch is add distress crayon around the edges of your substrate just to vintage that up a little bit obviously you would take time when you're off camera just to do that add that there like so so add that clip there could even add a little notepad to that, couldn't you? But I think for me, that is finished. And what I would do, if we look at the stamp set, we've got here, best wishes today, tomorrow, and always. I would probably add that here, but you know, you don't need to see me to add that. We just stamp that on there. But it, in this demo, I'm hoping that you've got the fact that You've used just parts of everything that's in the one day special. Part of the passion flower, part of the frittle area with the background stamping, part of the stencil mask that we've used in the background. And it just gives you a lovely finished piece. And it's this that the eye is drawn into. And that's the end of the demo. Thanks very much. See you soon. Bye.